Hi guys, Mr. Overon here with Mr. Overon's Tarot Reading Services and today I am going to make magical chalk. Um, now there's tons of recipes online and everything else and there's other YouTubers who have made magical chalk but um, this is how I do it so I'm just going to show you. Please forgive my workspace because the area right here is really just cram pack full of crap right now because I've been working on another project and um, this is my crafting table as well as my witch crafting table so um, yeah so please bear with me I'm even though I'm a Pisces I can function in chaos and discord and know exactly where everything is so just a <coughs> heads up so here we are okay so we first of all you're going to need a few simple ingredients uh, the first one is going to be your mortar and pestle now if you don't have mortar and pestle you can use uh, like a bullet or one of those ninja blender things whatever um, I have both. I have one that I have specifically for craft pro or for magical purposes like this, but um, I like to do it old-fashioned way, so I just have a mortar and pestle here. Um, you're, now, depending on what you are going to use uh, your chalk for is dependent on what ingredients you want to put into it. So if you're going to just use it for uh, straight magical purposes <coughs> like uh, just drawing out sigils and stuff on the wall you can make a plain chalk you can even go out and just buy yourself a box of like Crayola chalks or whatever um, chalkboard chalk and imbue it and bless it but if you wanted to make it yourself this is how you're going to do it now I've seen other people use uh, the long ice cube trays from uh, like Dollar Tree or whatever for putting in uh, plastic bottles. I only have regular ice cube trays so that's what I'm going to use. So you're going to want something that you can uh, put your chalk into and let it sit up and dry. Um, so I'm using that. Now um, this chalk that I'm making it's going to have multiple uh, uses. So I want it to be for banishing and for bringing in money and for protection. So for the money aspect of it, I'm using shredded money here, which I'm going to cut down into smaller little bite-sized pieces. Uh, for the protection aspect, I'm going to be using sea salt and uh, black salt. I'm also going to be using pepper and red chili flakes and uh, ground cinnamon as well as graveyard dirt. Uh, now the other thing that you're going to need for the base of the chalk itself is you're going to need cornstarch. So um, this formulary is extremely simple. It's equal parts. So if you put in two tablespoons of cornstarch, you're going to use two tablespoons of water. So to get started, I am... Oh, and I'm also using cascarella or uh, powdered eggshells. And that's... There was a, I have a video of me making these eggshells. Um, you do, but what you do is like after you've made breakfast or you've used any eggs or whatever, save out the shells, wash them really well, and then just set them aside to dry. And then in a mortar and pestle, or for me, I like using my blender, you just put the eggs in there, blend it until it gets uh, to the consistency that you want and then uh, store it in a jar. Um, I will let you know 
that it does have a little pungent smell. Not like a rotten egg smell, but just a little bit of a, hmm, smell. So, uh, the other thing you're going to want is a clean bowl to mix all your stuff in. And so, here we are. Uh, I'm going to start off with the herbs first. Uh, now, you can leave your herbs whole if you want, but I find that leaving whole herbs actually causes the chalk to break easier and faster. So, I'm starting off with the chili powder, or the chili flakes. And I'm just going to ground those down as best as I can. I wouldn't recommend using chili powder, like what you would use in making a chili base or whatever. But it's your magics. You do as you please. But if you order a lot of pizza and stuff like that, you probably have chili flakes laying around. If not, they're like a buck at the Dollar Tree or at most places. I think Walmart might be a dollar eighty-eight or some fraction thereof. Okay, so I got these as ground down as I can with this mortar and pestle. So I'm going to add that directly into my bowl here. Try to find a place to set everything because, well, you know, like I said, my workspace is kind of messy right now. Um, the pepper and the cinnamon are already ground down so is the salt or the black salt and the sea salt has the shake the shaker part on it so the next thing I'm gonna do is just take some of my money and this is just a few dollars that I cut into small strips because you know the old adage takes money to make money So I'm going to bring the bowl back over here, and then my handy dandy scissors, and just cut it really fine. Because if I leave the whole strip in there, then it's more likely to crack and break. Now you don't have to make an all-in-one like this, it's just one of those things that I want to do. I think that it's going to be beneficial to have an all-in-one. So I'm not going to use all the little money strips that I have, but as you can see in there right now, that's kind of how it's looking. So then I'm going to add in salt or my sea salt here and this is uh, pink Himalayan salt you don't have to use pink Himalayan you could just use regular sea salt if you don't have sea salt then just use regular iodized table salt Then I'm going to add in a little pepper. And in between these steps, should you wish to do so, you can um, the peppers get ready to make me sneeze. Yeah, in between these steps, as you're adding each ingredient, if you wanted to, you could um, bless and enchant each each individual uh, layer. 
I find that it takes away from my concentration to do so when I personally do it. But again, this is my magics. You do your magics how you do you. And somewhere in this jungle, I have a tablespoon. Ah, there it is. Spoon at the table. to break that up a little bit. I'm gonna tap all that right back into the mortar so I could get a good good grind on it and get things mixed up really well. get a better mortar and pestle, but for right now this is what I have, so this is what I use. So that's what we got going on right now. Now I'm going to add in my graveyard dirt. And this dirt is not sifted. I was rushed when I had to go to the cemetery to pick this up, so I just took a little shovel and took some dirt. You don't need very much because this is one of those formularies where a little goes a long way. But you could use any number of different herbs or what have you for this. If you're doing it, if you were going to make a chalk for love, you could put rosemary and lavender and all kinds of other stuff in there. I wouldn't suggest using essential oils just because um, I don't think that it would set up very well. I've never done it and I've never seen it done so um, doesn't mean that it can't be done just like I said I haven't personally seen it done and like things like honey and stuff like that I wouldn't um, add it in there for like love unless you have like powdered honey or something similar to that um, I would I could see maybe giving that a try. And for those of you counting at home, that was probably about three teaspoons of cascarella or eggshell powder. And I'm getting to the cornstarch. Um, basically what the cornstarch is, is it is the binder. What actually makes the white writable aspect of the um, chalk. And this isn't going to be like a really brilliant white chalk. It's just going to be enough to leave the markings. And once the um, chalk has been imbued with your energies and stuff you don't have to leave 
the markings on a wall, you can wipe it off. Um, I saw a late another YouTuber talk about um, how she could just wipe it off. Um, she's got a really amazing channel. It's called the Lady Grave Dancer. Let's see. Okay, so now. I'm going to take the bowl, and this is where the measurements kind of come into play, where you're going to want equal. So that was about two tablespoons, or three tablespoons. Basically what you want is the end consistency. You want it to look kind of like a pancake batter once you're all said and done. And if you're making up all the dip, all the cubed trays, then you definitely want enough to just um, do all that. And you don't have to use organic cornstarch or anything like that. I mean, I'm actually one of those people who kind of has a personal grudge against quote-unquote organic stuff. Just in the fact that it's a marketing ploy, in my personal opinion, but so... I'm going to say four tablespoons with that last little one right there. And you know, you, like pancake batter, you can always add more. You can't take away. So now I'm just going to add that all together. And I am going to give this a good mixing. And as you're doing this, if you feel that you need to add more of one item, by all means, do what feels right to you. But like I said, the end consistency that you're looking for is like a pancake batter. Kind of soupy but firm, not super watery. And as you can see, it has like this brownish gray color to it. And I'm feeling that I need to add a little bit more eggshell and a little bit m more grave dirt. God, I hate that smell. Woo! It's strong. Just a little bit of grave dirt. Okay. Now here comes the quote unquote fun part. Well, before I add water to it, I'm going to enchant. And if you see how I'm holding my hands like this, the visualization that I have is that energy is moving down through my crown chakra 
into my heart chakra and then being pushed down into my hands and the circular the, the shape with my fingers here is venting all that energy into it and it's also I'm picturing energy coming down into it now if you wanted to say a little enchantment over this you could um, that's completely up to you so um, if you are one of those people like well I don't know what I should say or whatever say something like um, blessed goddess enchant this um, formulary so that it will be of service to help protect me to protect those that I love to banish those who would cause harm or evil to banish those negative energies to bring money to, to me and prosperity into my life and to those who use it as so above as so below so shall it be you know something simple just off the top of your head and from the heart Okay, now this is the part where you start to add the water. So, you don't want to add a lot because remember you can always add more, but you can't take away. And you see how it's turning this nice gray black color. And then just stir it in. Be gentle with it. as I mix it up I like to just get everything incorporated first and then I will stir counterclockwise and envision the binding and the banishing and then stir it clockwise and envision the prosperity and the good fortunes coming from it. It's best to make this during the summer um, because it evaporates out quickly during the summer. Um, you can do it during the winter months. I would just say leave it to set up near a um, heater or keep it somewhere warm me just because the whole rest of my house is like taken up with stuff I'm probably just going to leave it right here or put it on my altar I have two altars set up in my house um, my working altar and then my personal altar and um, out of the two I use my working altar the, the most. The other altar is inside of a walk-in closet so not a lot of natural light and stuff gets in there. Okay so this is too soupy so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a little bit more cornstarch into <clears throat> yeah that turned almost into cement
Okay, now I got it back to a nice soupy consistency. You can add just a little bit more cornstarch, but I'm going to call this good because this is already going to take a month of Sundays. But now you just fill up your ice cubes. Now if you do the pour method like this, you're going to have a bunch of stuff and you see how I'm just kind of adding, adding it all into the different little cavities here. Okay, and there you have it. That is your chalk. Now you're just going to let this uh, dehydrate and set up and in about three or four days it should be ready to go. So I will continue the video in just a few. Okay guys, so it's been about a week now and um, here is what it looks like. Um, to get it out, I just banged this down a couple of times. You can see that some of these are still wet. That's why they're flaking. See the difference in the colors? One's like a darker gray. This one's still wet. This one's a lighter gray. This one's dry. Um, some of them broke because it was too soon. But, um, yeah, it being winter here in the Pacific Northwest things don't like to set up the way that they would in uh, summer. So, uh, yeah, this is still really cakey and... But, that is all you do. Now you use this just like you would a regular piece of chalk. Um, I don't have anything that I can really demonstrate this on, I don't think. Yeah. But, you know, you could see that it does leave a little bit of an outline here. I don't know if that's picking up on the camera or whatever. But that's how you make witch chalk. Or magical chalk. So, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please put them in the comment section down below. And if you would like a reading or spell work done, uh, check out my website, uh, MrOveron.com. And uh, as always, thank you for watching. And if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe and like button. And um, yeah, I will talk to you all later. Bye, my witches!